Welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker. We are in the troll lair and behind this door I suspect that Kargad is. Let's go in here and see how this will turn out. Stomp stomp. Farg Borba here. Borba won't kill daddy? Why kill daddy Borba? Ekon winces rock trolls small, smaller than Kargad. The trolls who have just appeared seemingly from nowhere look small. Though they are small only in comparison to a mature rock troll, their height equals the height of a grown man. Borba won't kill daddy. Borba garung. Borba bad. Ekon silently raises his bow. The trolls don't run away. Instead they stare at him with offended expressions. Want to kill us too, Borba? Requires good. Stop Ekon. Wait, Ekon. It was Kargad who murdered your family, not his children. They stand innocent before you. Killing them now will make you the very thing you loathe. Lower your bow now before it is too late. After several strained seconds, Ekon does as commanded, if half-heartedly. You are here to help my vengeance, O oh, you, he mutters, almost as if reminding himself. Let's go now. Don't want to see them anymore. He nods in the direction of the rock trolls. Now, that guy looks interesting. Running won't help you! Strike with the legend! <laughs> The troll utters a hoarse sound and falls thunderously. Dark, sticky blood oozes from his wounds. He tries to raise his hands to defend himself, but is able only to clench his fists. He snaps his jaws in one last effort to devour you. Suddenly, he goes still. Done. Ekon sighs, lowering his bow, and you are not sure if he's ta talking about the troll's death, about his completed vengeance, or about his own mental state. In the dim light, it seems to you that Ekon's eye use lose their usual spark. Several wrinkles seem to disappear from his forehead. The ranger comes closer to the defeated troll and stares at the corpse with contempt. His lips are pressed into a thin line, his fists clench. Chench? That's probably a typo. Clenched. And his knuckles are white. Without a word, Ekon raises his leg and delivers a great kick into the side of the rock troll. This effort must have been painful for the ranger, but not a single muscle moves in his face. His expression is a frozen mask of rage and suffering, and the pain from the hit fades in comparison. Done, Ekon repeats quietly, turning to you. Thank you, friend. Your help was priceless. He shrugs. From now on, your questions will be answered, if you still want them. You deserve that. Forward. Belt of physical might plus two. Mushrooms. Probably remember to buy more mushrooms. What is that? It had better it'd be better not to not ascertain what or whom this stew is made of. The room is filled with a sickening stench of carrion. What's inside these doors then? I was successful in my search. On the nature of the divine, you can read this if you want to. And a dead dwarf. No, oh, a dying dwarf. You see a pile of mutilated, mutilated bodies reaching nearly to the ceiling. The bodies used to be humans, dwarves, cows, sheep, and God knows what else. Some corpses look fresh, others have already started to decompose, filling the passage with a heavy, sickening stench. The trolls probably use this corner as a meat storage. 
you're ready to pass by, but suddenly you notice some weak movement near the edge of the pile. Having a closer look, you understand one of the corpses is not exactly a corpse yet. A bare-chested dwarf moves his lips silently, staring blindly at the ceiling. His chest has some bite marks left by a huge jaw, and he has no legs. They seem to have been bitten off at the knees. Amiri grunts in disapproval, caressing the hilt of her sword. It feels wrong to finish him off. He fights death itself. This battle is his. Let's leave this miserable sufferer alone. He's on the verge of non-existence, so let him make his own last step into oblivion. Ekon pulls an arrow out of the quiver. Mercy, he says, pointing towards the dying dwarf. Examine the dying dwarf. The dwarf definitely looks like he will not make it. He has lost a lot of blood, and his horrible wounds would have killed any other person long ago. The fact that he still clings to life is either a miracle or his own unthinkable stubbornness. Let's heal him. We will try to heal him. Your healing efforts have an effect of sorts. The dwarf seems to come halfway to life and starts talking in an unknown language. Karadash Kramrdu Galadon, or Gadadon. The light around you grows dim all of a sudden, and the floor starts to tremble, resonating with the dwarf's voice. Uzmar Cyril Najak. He gains 67 experience. Arim's hands clench at his beard. The ancient dwarven tongue, the curse of Torag. O oh, Grotus, embrace your faithful servant. We shall all die now. Arim's voice is half, sca half scared and half excited. You've all, you've had all, all the fun you wanted, I hope. What are you looking at? Finish him off now before he's done casting. Neutral good, try to heal the dwarf again. As soon as your healing kicks in, the dwarf interrupts his monologue, apparently regaining awareness of his surroundings. He moves his head with an immense effort and looks you up and down. You're not a troll? I thought you were one of them. The dwarf cuffs out clots of dark blood. I'm the priest of Torag. I've been searching this ancient outpost. Found it, it seems. He tries to laugh, but instead bursts into a new fit of cuffs. Come closer. With an immense effort, he raises his hand and whispers words of blessing, so sweet and kind comparing to his prior curses. Having heard Torag's name, Harim recoils. I need no blessings from the traitor god, he whispers into his beard. This last effort seems to be too much for the dying dwarf. Having finished, he drops his limp hand, draws one last breath, and falls silent. That's useful. He got good hope, plus two morale bonus on saving throws, attack rolls, ability checks, skill checks, and weapon damage rolls. Well, except for Harim, that is. was not in vain. And that's place welcome. Let's move on. Without a doubt. Kobold artist. An odd kobold sits in front of the wall. His scales, snout, and especially hands are covered with something akin to a blend of tar and what seems to be rancid, mud-coloured filth. Occasionally, the kobold plunges his hand into the clay pot nestled beside him, grabs a handful of paint, and slowly smears it on the wall. Judging by the odour, I can e tell exactly what the main ingredient in this paint is. At least it looks better than the paintings King's King Irovetti awards his prizes to. The unintelligible smears gradually resolve into a crude drawing of a huge kobold striking a heroic pose. There are many smaller figures surrounding him, but you can't tell who they might be. The kobold continues with his strokes. He doesn't seem to have noticed you, or perhaps he's just too lost in his work. <clears throat> Can you hear me? The kobold continues in a strange state that seems to be somewhere between deep meditation and a trance. He raises his paint-smeared hands to the wall, makes a small and deliberate stroke, then steps back to examine his creation as a whole. Hey, 
Can you hear me? The kobold slowly turns to you. You can't read the expression on his snout, but he certainly doesn't seem pleased. Shibarisha, Kazadalar, Tartuk. Kobold points towards his painting. Tartuk, he repeats before turning away. This Tartuk again. It's like he's everywhere. I'm sick of hearing that name. I fear I'm developing a conditioned response. Every time I hear Tartuk, I need feel the need to vomit. Can you tell me about Tartuk? Seems the kobold has told you all he intended to. He shows no reaction to, to f your further questions. Let's just leave. This one doesn't seem aggressive. Let's leave him be. We march ahead. Strike when centered! End they died. Let's finish them quick. You throw this down. Or maybe not. Useful stuff. Here's another of these uh, rune stones in the flooring. Don't like surprises. Don't worry, Lindsay will fix it. A composite longbow called Devourer of Metal. Now that looks interesting. Well, now, does acid damage. Composite has enhancement plus one, greater corrosive, and oversized. That is a major damage uh, upgrade. Yes, please. Also quite useful in here. Now we have two people who do acid damage naturally. That is quite a discovery. Okay, so we're at the other side of this bridge. Without a doubt. These rune things, we'll have to figure them out eventually, but for now, let's head on down. Ah, eh, leave. Okay. Chest. Shock Frost Heavy Mace plus one. Suit Blackened Hammer, that's probably for the collector. Uh, let's sort by type. That one is also quite a bit of an upgrade. Does both cold and electricity damage. You have that. Protector of Unjust. Cannot be equipped by lawful or good characters. Well, Harim isn't lawful or good, so that's fine. Anyone else using a... Well, if the dog was using a shield, I would be very surprised. Mm, that looks good. So... Test this door first. Need key. Okay. This one. It's just not my lucky day. Also need key. Okay, so I guess we'll have to go all around the entire thing and down the other side. You know what? I'm gonna pause the recording for that. So um see you when I'm at the other side. Here we are. Now let's go down this staircase instead. Quite useful to have all these acid things. 
masterwork short sword. There you go. They do exist. Let's have a look around out here before we go in there. I'm positive I found something. Oh, pearls. Open up the dryad. Our path leads on. Um, why isn't the dog? Guessing there's some kind of bug then. Class, please. Okay, so we had the key for this door. Do the big room then. Jason, you see a troll who looks familiar. He was the one who greeted you at the lair's entrance. You believe his name was Jason. He and some other trolls are surrounded by the gang of kobolds. Noticing you, Jason, Jason turns and bares his teeth. Borba came already. You like killing troll and kobold, Borba. Now Jason kills you. His muscles bulge under his thick pelt and his eyes are dark with anger lawful good. You've killed many people, plundered many villages, and now you have to answer for your crimes. If Borba kill Borba, you punish him. You not kill his whole family. The troll looks at you and snarls with contempt. We kill you now, Borba, but we no beasts anymore. We no eat your corpse. We bury it in some place. Let other Borba come to that place. Kobold, run! Trolls, dur Borba! The trolls roar loudly, so loudly that dust falls from the ceiling. Several kobolds heed Jason and run, but the rest gather beside the trolls. A withered kobold, clad in a stained rug, steps forward. Mens, Tartuk, Menas, he hisses. Tartuk, kobolds, peace, men's deaths. Do it the hard way. Strike as one. <laughs> This doesn't seem to end too well for them. And indeed it didn't. So we get silver ring, light armor plus three, and masterwork, light crossbow, a belt of incredible dexterity, Another masterwork light crossbow. Summon monster. Lots of stuff. Okay, so. Look, this is the rune of the Langebuck clan. Their whole clan must have perished many years ago. Now we know the place where their path ended. Let Grotus wrap them up in his eternal emptiness. Arim reaches his hand forwards as if trying to touch the rune. But, at the last moment, he jerks his fingers away. Where their path ended? I don't see a mountain of skulls below this rune. Some historians have lost their diplomas for such rash conclusions and sweeping generalizations. Knowledge word, world, check past. As far as I've heard, there is a big dwarven clan, the Langebuk, somewhere in Druma. I guess they own some sort of trade caravan business. They even own a store in Restov, supposedly. So, they didn't perish yet after all. What a shame. Arim lets out a discontented sigh. Anyway, every living creature is bound to die, he claims, but without too much certainty. Why does this rune shine? Dwarves like to mark the walls of their fortresses and caves. They use their clan rune for this purpose. Usually, they enchant this rune to spread light so the dwarves can proudly observe it even in the total darkness. Arim examines the rune one more time. Where is all your pride now, O oh Langebuk clan? Yeah, yeah, so sad. Let's go. Or rather, do you know anything about this clan? Arim nods with dignity, pulling his beard again. Dwarves have long, long lives. When my father was still young, he saw the Langebuk's exodus from Five Kings Mountains. They were heading to the north. Whole city had gathered then to wave goodbye to them. 
No one ever saw them again. Now I know what horrible fate befell over their poor souls. For all we know, the dwarves just left. We can't be so sure about their deaths. Arim sighs with sadness. We know they had left, and we know they have never returned to the Dwarven Kingdom in the south, so what do you imagine could happen to them? Arim shakes his head resignedly, resignedly, his beard making a slight rustling sound while moving over his chest. No, Caledon, all your hopes are empty, as are any other hopes in the world, I must add. Okay, so that rune there probably has a significance in terms of that puzzle thing upstairs. There's something. My search was not in vain. Secret room. Oh, it's a mimic. Eh. Serves you right. Well, it died. Loot. Loot. Shock light crossbow plus one. That one we can uh, definitely uh, put on. Uh, let's give it to Lindsay. Wait. Four to nine versus three to ten. Ah, let's give it to Lindsay. Without a doubt. Save. What do we have here? Who's the trap? Applause, please. We will be You deserved it. That wasn't so bad. We'll do these things. Cobalt Boomsayer. Okay, so what's this way then? You see that? We've downed better ones. Oh dear. Let's uh, pull back. Now everyone please stand very still while Lindsay removes the trap. Anything else? Thank you. Another key. Please. Chainmail plus two. Tusk water oysters. I will guide us. Let's check out that chainmail. Two. We can level up as well. I'm guessing that will not do any good at all, even his high dexterity. Lin uh, Amiri, however, should get one more, more class from it. Um. Before we continue, it's probably a good idea to level up. Caledon will take another level of Sorcerer. Grab Mobility. Ultra Cana. And Persuasion. Wait. Check something. 
Yeah. You have knowledge arcana? No, you don't. Then let's do it. I plan. Closer, one more level. Mobility, knowledge arcana, and persuasion. And. Penetration. Do we have that? And for the bloodline feet selection, uh, spell focus transmutation. Get one level one spell. Way of enfeeblement. For level two, let's grab blindness. And for level three, haste now Lindsay you get another level of bard of course aesthetics mobility trickery knowledge world some more stealth as for a feat Deft hands. Now for spells. Finish level three. Up cure serious wounds. Thundering uh -huh. drums look interesting. Then we have Amiri, the level of Barbarian. Continuing skills we have. E. Extra Rage Power. Or... to claw attacks. A beast totem ray cannot later choose again at the dragon totem ray. But do we get dragon totem on this character at all? Let's grab Swift Foot. And then for Harim, Cleric, of course. You need Outline. Perfect. I can you want to have one level of ranger have the skills you already have Beep. out bank on you as well 
finally jubilant. Another level of alchemist. Move on with the skills we already have. For bombs? Yes, we can. Perfect. Get a level 3 spell. Shape. <laughs> I think so. Protection from arrows. Take haste on him. Oh. Before we rest, I should remember to take a look at the uh, Arim's spells. I want to do that now because this is up. We must I ahead. remove the ones that I uh, to have already memorized. <laughs> rooms why there are no traps here this room is very big edible moss Whoa, whoa, you, kobold, this troll's loot. Two troll, huge trolls overhang the group of kobolds. They are pressing their huge fists against their hips and seem irritated. The kobolds, however, doesn't seem to be in any way disturbed by the threat the trolls radiate. They rummage busily through the pile of stuff littering the stone floor. Looks like this is the stockpile the trolls had brought back from their recent raids to the neighboring villages. Among the stockpile stuff you can see some filthy rags, a broken table, a door which had been torn off the hinges, and a massive oak bureau. Tartuk spoils allows those. Our Gulka sea loot first, share later. Trobold's rule. The kobold looks in the troll's eyes emotionlessly for several seconds, then turns away having lost the interest in this conversation. For a moment, it seems that the troll will hit the kobold and smash him with a single blow of his huge fist. But the seconds pass, and the troll still stands motionlessly over the kobolds who seem to ignore him completely. Argulka will know. Argulka and Tartuk will punish you. We tell him. The troll announces, at last stomping his feet indignantly. It's hard to say if the kobold understands the meaning of these claims, but all the enraged troll's shouting has absolutely no effect on him. Having the bureau opened, a kobold fishes out a long black whip, raises it above his head, and hisses triumphantly. We shall overcome. I aim true. But you can This is where I step in. Your strike missed him. Clever ploy. Not that their uh, little loot conversation brought them anywhere. You can always say it was all for naught. Black whip. A black leather whip with an engraved handle. It is surprisingly light and easy to hold. There's something sinister about it. So we found the wizard's whip. This troll treasury reminds you of a city dump. Broken tables, smashed cupboards, doors ripped from their hinges, all taken from raids on human villages. Forwards. 
Look ahead. Another key. Here's the second half of the Commandant's journal. If you want to read it, I will scroll through it so that you can uh, pause the recording and read what it says. There we go. On. Become as dust. Just me, or did that dog turn you twice the size? Feel like the dog needs to be healed. Oh, skin and collect. I don't like surprises. Applause, please. Without a nice search was not in vain. No, it was not. Anything else? A door. Did I miss anything up here? Well, I think that uh, we will uh, take a look at the rest of the dungeon in the next episode. So thank you all so very much for joining me and see you all next time.